Hi everyone, my name is LB and this is my presentation on HD, I, uh, aka Hilda Doolittle. I'm going to start out with the Helmsman, the Helmsman from Seagard. Oh, be swift. We have always known you wanted us. We fled inland with our flocks. We pastured them in hollows, cut off from the wind and the salt track of the marsh. We worshipped inland. We stepped past wood flowers. We forgot your tang. We brushed wood grass. We wandered from pine hills through oak and scrub oak tangles. We broke hyssop and bramble. We caught flower and new bramble in our hair. We laughed as each branch whipped back. We tore our feet in half-buried rocks and knotted roots in acorn cups. We forgot. We worshipped. We parted green from green. We sought further thickets. We dipped our ankles through leaf mold and earth, and wood and wood bank enchanted us. And the feel of the clefts in the bark, and the slope between tree and tree, a slender path strung field to field, and wood to wood, and hill to hill, and the forest after it. We forgot, for a moment, tree resin, tree bark, sweat of a torn branch were sweet to taste. We were enchanted with the fields, the tufts of coarse grass, and the shorter grass. We loved all this. Climbs, hesitates, crawls back. Climbs, hesitates. Oh, be swift. We have always known you wanted us. Um, so this is from Sea Garden. It's the second poem in the book, and I was immediately attracted to it because of the title, The Helmsman. Um, knowing H.D.'s um, proficiency in Greek literature, I knew that this must be a reference to Chiron, who is the helmsman of the skiff that takes you across the River Styx to the underworld. So there's kind of this undercurrent of death and of, you know, um, being dead or kind of being between the worlds of life and death in this poem, which doesn't come out too much in the body of the poem itself, but which is referenced by the title. Um, things you'll notice, O.B. Swift, is not unlike an invocation to the muse that begins a lot of epic poetry. Um, there's also, the first uh, stanza is focused on more pastoral natural images as opposed to the rest of the poem, which is more wild natural images. And there is a tension in the poem between natural and agricultural, agricultural being a, an attempt by man to kind of tame, um, tame the wild. Um, and, and I chalk this up to, you know, kind of a, a kind of flagrance of sense of identity. You know, a lot of HD's poems are struggling to put um, the speaker's self in, into the world and kind of figure out who they are and, and what, um, what sort of role they're supposed to play in the world. But, um, yeah, we worship, too. There's a lot of, like, religious iconography, so worshiping, enchantment, too, kind of brings up the idea of religion again later on in the poem. Okay, so we step past wood flowers, forgot your tang. Tang, of course, is a reference to phallic imagery, um, which I, there's this undercurrent of sort of sexual carnal desire, too. This is kind of a love poem. Um, we have always known you wanted us, kind of draws up that image, too. It's a, it's a love poem, or a poem to a lover. And the we, too, using the plural first person um, pronoun usage, it is more of a play on the, the sense of identity, too. Like, who are we? Who am I? I'm struggling to put myself against my peers, but also at the world at large. Uh, moving a little bit further down um, into the fourth stanza. No, the third stanza. We caught flower and new bramble fruit in our hair. So there's this like image of catching it as almost as a crown. And so nature around her, or around the speaker, is giving the person an identity, which that identity is that of royalty, so it's elevating the personal identity in nature. We forgot we worshipped, um, which begins sort of the turn in the poem. We forgot we worshipped, the religious iconography again. We parted green from green, and then there's the rest of the poem uses this kind of like repetition of images to kind of solidify things in your mind. But green from green, and wood and wood, wood and wood bank enchanted us. And then this new stanza, which the rest of the poem almost exclusively begins with we, but this part, you know, each line starts with Anne, and the feel of the clefts in the bark, and wood to wood, and hill to hill, and the forest after it. So it's still lots and lots of natural imagery, and clefts um, can bring up, like, you know, images of female genitalia, so there's more of that kind of sexual undercurrent to it. We forgot for a moment, sweat of a torn branch were sweet to taste. Um, so 
nature offering itself to us. Um, we were enchanted with the fields, we loved all this, which was an interesting choice to use love in this poem, because um, it is a love poem, but um, she actually comes out and states that we loved all this, we loved enjoying ourselves in nature. Um, climbs, hesitates, crawl back, so this part of the poem is in first person, as opposed, or um, is in present tense, as opposed to the rest of the poem, which is in past tense. So, um, an interesting change that puts you in the moment, climbs, hesitates, crawl back, climbs, hesitates. So the speaker is going through these motions and we're going through them with her. Oh, be swift, we, we have always known you wanted us. So it makes the poem circular because it's ending on the same two lines that it began with, so it immediately calls you back to the beginning. So this is Sea Garden, um, and a lot of things that you would have expected from a poem or from a poem from a book called Sea Garden. So, maritime and floral energy, or um, floral imagery, but also the floral imagery being used as metaphor for sexual desire. Um, yeah. So this is indicative of her style at that time. She was kind of a new writer and um, learning, you know, learning kind of finding her sense of identity as a poet, but also the speaker finding their self sense of self in the world. Next, the walls do not fall. Um, so it begins an incident here or there, um, and rails gone for guns. So it's important to know that this was written right after World War II, um, and rails for guns, you know. So there's a lot of um, devastation going on in America and Europe at that time, too, because, you know, almost everyone had either sent someone into the war or had some sort of, you know, felt some sort of repercussions from the war. And she is herself, so the speaker of the poem is, is feeling a lot of that as well. An incident here or there, here and there. So here and there are used throughout the poem to kind of drive things, but it's also, um, uh, again, that kind of resonance of self-identity. Where am I? Am I here or there? How can I place myself in a world? And there's a lack of natural imagery in this poem. Um, in, con in stark contrast to Sea Garden, it's all you know much more prescient in the, um, the aftermath of the war. So an incident here or there, and rails gone for guns. But here and there kind of will drive it. She'll use it in different ways. So like here and there in the first line, there as here, a little bit further down, there as here, there, here, there. It, it drives the poem forward, and um, you know in subsequent poems in this book, too. There's that same sort of imagery. Um, the rain falls, sand drift, eternity endures. So, the sense of identity is that, you know, um, we can be overcome by time. Eternity will endure, even if rain falls, the shrine lies open to the sky, even if these things